Hi, I'm Rigo. This is You All Right, and today it's time for some self-reflection. Before that though, be sure to like the video if you like it, share if you think others would like it, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe if you want to see more. So, this falls into the categories of things I don't think will happen, but I want to talk about. In fact, it's something pretty fun that I might explore further on the channel in some other videos. So at this point, we've heard all the theories about where they went. What I'm going to say probably isn't new, but I'm not actually sure. The idea being that they fall into a mirror universe. Now obviously, looking at the island, it's not exact, right? It's clearly weird and wonderful, but in a way that actually works with this theory. It's the opposite of where we came from. As far as we know, shells and remnant are regular size, and we've seen that our trees don't do this, and especially don't do whatever this is. You could say that a tropical island is also the exact opposite of an icebound atlas. Which, while true, is a little shakier since the last place we actually were was the central location. That's assuming the central location really counts as a place. Now, while this is more speculative, there is some evidence for this. I mean, we've had mirror themes throughout Ruby, obviously. Thoughts about that especially go to Weiss. And while I've mentioned the Alice in Wonderland idea, and that definitely does apply here, through the looking glass? A looking glass is actually a mirror, so if we fell through a looking glass, fell through a mirror into Wonderland, it could mean that Wonderland is a mirror, right? But what would be most interesting about this concept is not like me trying to prove to you that's what's happening, but let's just think about it. It's the characters. Because I was thinking over, this is the perfect little middle ground for how we deal with characters in wherever we fell into. And what I mean is it's kind of a, uh, it's not like an in-story problem, it's a writing problem that you run into. Which is, at this point, Ruby has a ton of characters. Too many, honestly. And it's always been a problem that the series has. So introducing more new characters for this alternate world not only bulks out that roster that's already too big, but it also makes it hard to become attached to them as an audience member. Especially because of a few assumptions that automatically come into your mind, whether you're aware of it or not. First and foremost is that we'll be leaving. So becoming attached to anyone in this alternate place is difficult, especially when you have the background of all the other characters we've left behind in the plot, and that's even in the normal world. So they're volumes away, and we've you know left them behind. So saying, oh, you're in an alternate universe now, become attached to these brand new people over one volume when you're probably gonna leave again, is hard to get across to an audience. It's hard to make the audience invested and buy in to any drama or anything that's happening. Because think about it, you have everything to deal with while we're there, the challenges that the characters have to overcome, the characters we know, like our characters. And then you have to intro these new characters, maybe learn background on them or learn enough about them to get attached to them, and how our characters relate to them, then whatever's going on with them, and then you're supposed to care and you only have one volume to get all this done. And that's just the side of the main plot we're on. So, you know, how do you make an audience care? But there is a way to do it, and it's if the people here are mirrors of the ones we already know. And I don't just mean they're like this world's version of them, I mean they're actually mirror images. We see people we already know, but they're different versions of themselves. Now, then the question comes up of how do you mirror? And by that I mean there's different versions of how you do a mirror universe, like what exactly are you mirroring? I would like to think and hope that we've gotten past the old TV trope at this point of going to a mirror world where everyone's just now evil and everyone wears leather all the time and has a black goatee and that means that they're bad. Uh, it's a little old hat, though Ruby with a goatee is hilarious. Now, in concept you could do the side flip. It's flipping the script of the universe, sort of the script of the narrative where everything is sort of backwards from what we know where Oz, Ruby, and the rest of our heroes are the bad guys, but you'd need to explain the world more. And I'm very on board with this concept if they were willing to put the time into it. You flip the script, and Salem, whilst still an immortal, is protecting the relics, or trying to get some of them back. And her ragtag group of agents, like, you know, Tyrion and Cinder, are trying to help her while Ozpin has created the academies and trained huntsmen to hunt her down and take the relics and power for himself on a quest to basically become God. Perhaps the grim of this world are still a thing, but it's something Salem hates that she has to use, but she has to and mourns the innocents lost because of them, but it's one of the only forms of defense she has she could deploy into the world to kind of slow everyone down and keep Oz and his forces back. 
Ruby and Co. exist, but they're like inducted cult members, zealots for Oz's cause, brainwashed into believing his way of thinking, believing they're doing the right thing. See, in this way, it's almost, it's basically how Salem could almost tell this story. If you were seeing the narrative from the bad guy's side, but they see themselves as the good guys, and, you know, tiny details are flipped, but you see the opposite of the world you're in. You almost see what the story could have been. That's flipping the script. Another version of mirroring is flipping the characters themselves, which is different. It can have some of the same effects, but it's different. It's not the narrative of the world is different. It's the people that we already know have had very different experiences, usually the exact opposite experience, and it's changed them to become very different people. Oftentimes, almost polar opposites of who they are that we know. Ruby is the easiest example. She's pure, mostly positive, happy, can be unsure and indecisive. We all know Ruby. So what's her opposite? A hard-edged, violent, snap decision-making, ruthless killer who doesn't mind dueling people and will destroy anything or anyone in her path to get what she wants. Which, while sounding badass and could look badass, makes you very quickly the bad guy. Deadly and unreasonable. Resentful, probably, as well. Now, obviously, it doesn't totally flip everything. Like, oh, now she's bad at fighting because Ruby's pretty good at fighting. Because, no, that's not fun. But if we flip the base parts of her personality, not necessarily her skills, you get the opportunity for the team they meet to be both far better and far worse and very different. You can meet Mira Jean, who is the ultra-competent him, but who lacks all compassion, who is vengeful and broken, a shell of a person who runs on hate. Or perhaps, a little like my current Ruby run, cheap plug, Jean could have died in this version, and we see instead a violent, bloodthirsty Pyrrha. You know, maybe even building to our Jean, needing to cross blades with their Pyrrha. Or, something else crazy, is that this broken Pyrrha we meet, and our sad Jean that we have in our world, who's gone there, both come face to face, and they both have to deal with what they've lost. Finding that other them in the other world, and helping each other come to terms with it, being a bit more adult about it, not just they fight each other, they talk with the one they've lost in their world respectively, and come to terms with it, essentially saving their Pyrrha, and their Pyrrha helping our Jean, and that's the close to that, you know? You could do something really interesting there. Blake can meet who she'd be if she never changed her ways. Twisted and corrupted, underhanded, an assassin most likely, who does whatever is asked of her for the cause without question and villainizes everyone in the world, never finding, you know, the people who made her who she is now, who, you know, made her a good person, who's had her instead worldview be shattered and you know, fell back into this dark path she possibly started on to, again, not with ill intentions, but has turned out to be such a corrupted and lost person. Almost becoming an Adam, right? Losing sight of the cause and the, what's truly wrong and instead becoming broken. Yang could also meet a broken version of herself who gave up fighting for what was right you know, lost her sister to become the hard evil Ruby we talked about, who wallowed in misery, broke ties with her family, and lost her fire. Washed up and pathetic. Weiss can see who she might have become in the Schnee line, controlling the company, being cutthroat and uncaring towards the world, a vicious, unshakable evil queen atop her empire, choking the world without a hint of compassion towards anyone. While yes, this whole idea is a little cliche, it does offer something very interesting for our heroes, because if they arrived in a world like this, instantly we care a bit more because we sort of know these people, and you get to show off, perhaps, what some fans would like to see, like badass Ruby. But then you also get to show the flaws in that character and that way of thinking, and it has just as many downsides as benefits. The characters, our characters, can learn a lot from themselves, including if they are to fight themselves, but it can give resolve to their decisions and their, their paths that they've already taken. 
lessons in things that they're lacking that they could learn from their counterpart, and being confronted by what they could have been. It offers a great chance for character growth under the guise of showing off some cool alt-world versions and designs and ideas of the people we already know. I mean, you could find good Cinder, who rescued Emerald off the street life because the, she had kindness in her heart and wanted to help, not wanting to see Emerald suffer. And evil Emerald, who is taking advantage of Cinder's generosity, flipping the dynamic we have now and using Cinder for all she's worth, taking advantage of this good person to get ahead. These ideas can be pretty cool to explore, and you can already kind of get on board with them because as an audience we sort of already know these people. We just have to mentally flip some of the story we already know and that's not as hard to do. I would love to continue this discussion and I might, I'll get back to that. But carrying on in general, you also have opportunities for doing things in a mirror world, like Jean reclaiming his sword from the alternate him taking it because that Jean did not deserve it in his way of life, but our Jean does by the end of this journey. Not to mention, if you're going to do the idea of a character from this place perhaps sticks with the group, you know, to sort of make this arc uh, long-lasting, perhaps someone from this world comes back with our team, and you could bring back someone who's sort of themselves, but a little different from the one we know, well, that's absolutely perfect, because perhaps you find Torchwick, right, that wants to fight for good. He is a good person in this world. He might still be, you know, a bit of a street rat and a bit, you know, uh up himself and all those personality traits, but he wants to do the right thing. In that world, he was perhaps the one who lost Neo, and this changed his ways, and the lonely Neo and their lonely Torchwick can be reunited here, and they are still who they are, they have the same backstory, it's just that the incident that occurred changed their paths. So this is still sort of Torchwick, but it's just not wants to kill us Torchwick. That's how you get a Torchwick that's on side, that isn't just trying to kill Ruby and co when they show up. There could be really sweet and heartwarming, and in fact, if you wanted to shed Neo from the show, not that I do, but if you wanted to, she could also elect to stay, which, you know, would be really beautiful, that if you want to give her an ending, a good ending, it could be that our Neo stays in the alternate world with the alternate Torchwick. Perhaps he can't come back with them, so she elects to stay. And that's her end. And that's a better ending than you can hope for, probably, if she goes with them, which is probably she's either going to leave or die. You know, that's probably what's going to happen in reality. So it has that opportunity for these, you know, endings you might not think you want, but in reality for the character, they're amazing opportunities. Like I said up top, it's not really the strongest as a theory, but it has tons of of potential. There isn't heaps of evidence that this is something they can do, but there is a little bit. But there's so much in the stories. And Ruby, if nothing else, loves taking inspiration from other things, and other things have done this very well. It does quickly fix the character connection problem of meeting these people in the other land, because we sort of already know them. And like I said, you can do more than just flipping the people. You can flip the whole narrative and script in this alternate world, if you like. Put our forces alongside the villains, but now they're the good guys, and, you know, they have to fight themselves. That's pretty interesting. There's fertile ground here. You can try and out outsmart yourself, right? You have to think, what would I do? Oh no, I'm sort of evil me. What would my plan be? And work to beat yourself, and then you learn your own weaknesses. There's lots of chance for growth here before they go back and have to continue the fight. There's fertile ground for a story, and whilst going on, you know, Alice in Wonderland adventures seems more likely, the Wonderland is meant to be dreamlike, in Wonderland. So this is a dreamlike concept. But what I wanted to say before I wrap this up is, would you guys be interested in me talking about this more? Whether it is Volume 9 or not, like, in the Volume 9 aside, perhaps exploring what a Mirror Universe Ruby could be? Or maybe even delving into what the Mirror World characters could be? Because I think that's really fun. If you can't tell, I'm quite enthusiastic about talking about this. I think it's really cool. Not even necessarily, like I said, as a Volume 9 thing, just in general as a concept. I could perhaps make some videos about a Mirror World, on Mirror World characters and what we could do, and we can talk plot. Maybe, and it's not now, I would not be able to do this now. But maybe down the line, way in the future, I could even think about making like a crazy outlandish Ruby run, where it's like, what if the world was a Mirror Universe or something? But I'd want more practice and time doing runs before I even tried something that huge. 
but I could also possibly use like discussion videos about the characters to try and flesh out the idea of whatever that world would be in that plot. Or not, just have fun with it. If anything along those lines is something you'd actually be interested in hearing about from me, please let me know, because while this isn't the strongest theory, it's a very fun concept to explore, and I'm up for talking about it more. Anyway, I guess I'll leave it here. Until next time, my name is Rigor, hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I did alright.